Okay, so that should be all of the configuration that we need on this Cisco ICE. Next, we're going to have to modify our firewall as it's currently using a local database, which is that user Cisco we tested with. But instead, we're going to reconfigure the firewall to utilize ICE as a radius server. So first, we have to define the radius server with the triple A dash server command. We give it a name called radius. And then for protocol, we use radius, although ASA is capable of supporting a number of protocols. Here we deal with radius. And then we go triple A server. Once again, radius. And we can specify whether it's uh, which interface you want to use to communicate to your radius server. In our case here, the ICE is sitting on the inside interface. And then host. And the IPFL ICE server is 32.102. We're going to give it retry interval of two second. Let's see what else we have here. And then most important configuration is the key. And that has to match with what we already have configured on ICE under the network device. So key would be Cisco. And that's all we need. Next, we're going to take away the tunnel group list. And as soon as we do that right here, when once you remove the tunnel group list command, the drop down option for the group will disappear. So we're going to end up with this and that way the user can no longer select the groups from the list because now we're going to use ICE to automatically assign the group to that user. So there's no need for us to have this option anymore. So right here with ton of group list enable, I'm just going to remove that and then let's double check and make sure that's gone. And it has. And now we're going to have to tell the firewall, the ASA, to start utilizing the radius. And as soon as you take away this tunnel group or the user can no longer select which groups they're coming in from, they're all going to be landed on the default WebVPN tunnel group. And if you do show run all tunnel group, and this is something that you need to be aware of as soon as you take away the user ability to select which groups they're coming in from, then all the requests, the VPN requests is coming in for the AnyConnect will be landing on this default web VPN group. As you can see, currently we're using the local for our authentication. We're going to have to change that and tell it to start using the radius server. And the command is authentication server group. And then point to our AAA server we just created. Okay. That should be all of the modification that we need right now before we go ahead and start uh, a test VPN. Let's enable locking. So locking on and locking console seven and then let's debug as well. So we can monitor the radius communication. So debug radius all. Okay, so let me clean up that screen. Now let me bring up the back on our Windows 7 test machine. Let's disconnect. Actually, that's producing some output. So let me clean up that one more time. Connect. We knew that uh, previously we were using a username Cisco. So let's try that and make sure that the firewall no longer used the local user. As you can see, now it's failing. Okay, so we can say cancel. First, we're going to test the user admin one. So let's click connect one more time. Okay, we'll connect anyway, and that's just because we don't have a certificate that's signed by a trusted CA. Now for the username is admin1, and for the password, it's just Cisco, and this is our AD account. We'll click connect. You can see it's performing required updates, so it's trying to connect right now, and now it's trying to establish VPN, and now it's connected. Okay, so the connection is succeeded. If we go over to our eyes and bring up the authentication page, you can see right there, the first time that we failed with Cisco, and that's because the ASA passed on the user information to ICE. And obviously, we do not have a user Cisco created on the ICE itself or anywhere, as a matter of fact. So here with the admin one that came in, it received the authorized search profile VPN at, uh, network admin as we configure it. And if we click on the detail, let's go through this real quick. So you got authorization profile VPN network admin and it matched the policy called VPN network admin. ICE policy set name is VPN. We use the default authentication. That's what it's uh, 
means and then username admin1 and admin1 is was found on the active directory authentication is pap since it's the what vpn is and you can see here nas port type is show up as virtual okay scroll down further you can see it matched the default web vpn group and here are the basically domain name and these are all the AD groups that the user is a member of. So it's listed right here. So, and these are the radius replies that went back to the firewall. You can see a class attribute OU equal network admin as well as downloadable ACL for the VPN no ICMP. Let's do a no locking on just to stop the locking for a second here. And now if you do show VPN session and you connect and you can see here's our session or active session and here we came in as a default web VPN group and it has received a network admin as far as its group policy and that was specified as part as the OU equal. Okay, you got the IP and we're seeing both transmit and receive bytes so we know that uh, the tunnel must be bidirectional right now and if you do show access list you see that we have a downloadable ACL listed here as well for VPN no ICMP with all this cryptic character as part of the session, basically. And that's how the ASA kind of keep the downloadable ACL assigned and separated per users. And here on the content, we have deny ICMP and then permit IP any any. You can see there's a whole bunch of logs here. Let's see if we can kind of catch the important parts. This, so request, so this is a radius request. And we can tell that because the username is admin1. Well, actually, it's more like a reply because further down, we have a OU equal network admin. So it's kind of hard to read because we do a debug radius all. So it's giving all the possible debug outputs. Okay, so OU equal, that's what's coming back from ICE. And we also see right here our downloadable ACL with IP VPN no ICMP. And here's the radius accept. You can see uh, further down, you can actually see the content of the ACL with the deny ICMP any any and permit IP any any. All right, so now that we have the VPN established, let's do a quick test. This one, it should be no ICMP. So if you're trying to ping, for example, our domain controller at 32.40, you can see it's not pingable. And let's see if we can do show log deny. No, it looks like it's not showing up. That's okay. And instead, we can try to do HTTP uh, to ICE, for example, which is 1632.102. You can see we can hit the ICE server since we're using a non-ICMP. In this case, it's HTTPS. Or we can even try to do 32.40. And here we're hitting the web server on our domain controller. All right, so we know that our downloadable ACL is working, and that's for the admin one. So now let me disconnect, okay, and then reconnect. This time we're going to be coming in as a support one user, and with support one, all we're getting is a ICMP access, and we should be placed under the network support group policy as well. So the username will be support one, okay, and now we are connecting. Actually, let me kind of clean that up real quick and then establishing a VPN and now we are connected if you look at the detail this one should be no split tunnel okay now going back on our ICE authentication report here we have our support one came in and in this time it's receiving an authorization profile of VPN network support okay we can click into that the majority of these information should be very similar to what we saw earlier with the admin one user Obviously, this one has a shorter list as far as the group membership on the AD. And then as far as the result, it received the OU equal network support and the downloadable ACL of VPN ICMP only. Okay, now, now on the firewall, let's do show VPN session, any connect. There you can see that the support one users also came in through the same tunnel group which is default web VPN group just like the admin one but they get switched to a group policy network support 
and then we do show access list. Here in our access list is VPN ICMP only, and this is just got downloaded when the user authenticated, and it's just permit ICMP any any. Let me scroll up real quick and see if we can see anything here. You can see this is a radius response, so coming back from ICE for user support one, you got this session ID, network support as OU equal, and then it also has the VPN ICMP only, just like how we saw it right here. Okay, and again, the content of the ACL shows up right there. That's part of the downloadable ACL. All right, now let's do a quick check. Let's try to ping 32.40 what failed earlier for the admin one. Now it's succeeding for our support one because support one is permitting ICMP. But let's try to go to the using HTTP. I can see this clearly being blocked by the downloadable ACL. Okay, so that is for user support one. Now the last user that we're going to test with is the local one user that's local to ICE. So trying to connect again. And for the username is local1, password is cisco123, I believe, with uh, cap C. Okay, now it's connecting again, establishing VPN, and we are connected. And this particular person or user should receive the same VPN access as the admin one. That means split tunnel and no ping. Okay, so ping is failing, but everything else should be working. So web. Okay, so web's working. The other one that we tried was HTTPS. That goes to ICE. Okay, you can see that we're hitting that as well. Okay, going back to ICE authentication page, refresh, we just see local one came in here with authorization profile VPN network admin. We're just not gonna go into that since it's gonna look identical to our admin one or actually accept the identity source or store it's now instead of ad it becomes internal users okay and the data group is local admin okay same thing if we do show vpn session any connect came in as default web vpn group and then get placed under network admin okay so as you can see that for the whole time that we've been testing with three different users me being the user didn't really need to specify or not really need to know what groups I get placed under. So it basically makes the whole user lock-in experience a, lot, a whole lot easier. And at the same time, you being a network admin no longer is responsible for assigning a VPN access to the user because now it's up to the system admin who has the control of the Active Directory to place the corresponding users to the proper AD groups they belongs and then from there on based on the group membership ICE will be able to determine which VPN group the user will be assigned to and this is where you configure your OU equals and all that and get and maps the user membership on the AD to the group policy using the authorization policies right here. Okay so also as far as the configuration on the firewall you also somewhat reduce the number of the tunnel groups that you have to create because now everybody will be coming in through the same default web VPN tunnel group. So you no longer need to create all these individual tunnel groups for each type of VPN user. Okay, so it saves actually your configuration on the firewall in that regard as well. And that wraps up our video on ICE 1.2 and the Connect VPN Radius Authentication and Authorization. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmits.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.